it's wild that every bike is just blowing up on, on impact. And that no one really seems to care. All the riders just keep going. If they're on fire, like that's kind of my cue to say, yeah, we've gone a little too far here. Hey guys, Travis Pastrana here, and this is The Breakdown. First up, motocross. You've got a girl that's dressing up as a boy because basically her family is not letting her ride and she's not being taken seriously. But you know, uh, times have changed over the last little bit. In reality, I feel like if you're a female in the sport of motocross and you're doing well, you'll probably get a lot more support. The 32nd board goes up. A typical race has 42 riders on the gate or 40 for the Outdoor National Championship. So there'd be actually quite a few more riders than was actually shown there. It looked like a smaller track. This would be a typical regional or area event. We gotta crown ourselves a 125 and a 250 champion. It's gonna happen over the next three weeks. This was taken a while ago, so it was during two stroke times. Now they have 250 and 450, four stroke, different types of machines that have kind of revolutionized the sport. I still ride a two stroke, which would be 125 or 250. 125, they call the lights class. That's where um, I actually won my championship back in 2000. So generally your younger riders, your riders coming up through the ranks would be in the 125s. And the 250s would be your more experienced riders. Uh, the guys, that's your premier championship, if you will. To be a 125 and 250 champion has never happened and actually not allowed to happen in outdoor nationals. You can only pick the 125s, which would be the lights, or the premier, which would be the 250. Riders from all over the state are vying for that Phil Rollins motorcycle. The mechanics will be right down with you till the start, just kind of giving you that last little pep talk or generally not tweaking on the motorcycles or making any adjustments. At that point, you're, you're kind of got what you got. You know, a little more dramatic than, than maybe in real life, but in a professional race at the top level, the riders know what they have to do. There's no one that really gets in their head unless there's something on the track that their mechanic sees that they wouldn't see. They did a, an awesome job with the, the gear and everything. You know, that's one thing Hollywood generally gets is the look of things. Carson all alone bring up the rear. If he doesn't watch out, he's gonna get lapped by the leader before this thing is over. They actually used some good riders for this, so all the riding was legit. Looked really cool, opposite of what you see in a lot of car racing films or when they're trying to make fake action, like you hit the gas and all of a sudden you pass four people. Joel Albrecht rode for the main character. He's a really good motocross rider. Um, so everybody else was real motocross riders. Maybe not the top or the best, but they were all very good um, at the amateur level. But I was a part of this film and I actually uh, knocked the, the main character down. Uh, ironically, uh, if you want a fun fact, I had a broken wrist at the time. So I had a stunt double ride for me, which is the first and only time I've ever had a stuntman. I've seen it happen maybe once in my life where a top rider gets stuck in the gate. Not something that's very common, but there's a lot of times you go down on the first turn and you can still come back to be fairly competitive. The announcers are not gonna talk about something that's just so rare to happen. Not only did your character start in last place, but now the first place rider is going so much faster that they've gone on, put an entire lap on that character. Totally frustrated. A lapper should move out of the way. Barrett trying to get him out of it now. Barrett takes it into his own hand. See you later, rookie. You know, everyone's yelling, get out of the way, which would totally happen. And yes, you would probably get knocked down if you were a lap down holding up the leader. If I was lapping that rider, I would knock them down much, much harder. If they were blocking the way, that would be expected. You don't block the lead guys. And when they come by, they come by fast and they will not necessarily go out of their way to knock you down, but motocross, there's, there's no penalties. So that was very gentle. <laughs> it all makes sense except for this rider that obviously isn't very good. They're either nervous or scared or whatever happened, they get stuck in the gate, they go a lap down. They try to battle with the leader, which is you just don't do. Next up, Hot Rod. Kimball's preparing for his final approach, ascending the multiple ramp levels to the tippy top. Now, do you really need a downhill ramp? No, but is it very Evil Knievel? Yeah, look, he's just, just excited. Gets the crowd pumped up. This all feels very real to me. It all feels like a lot of showmanship. It's all about the stunt. 
nothing to do with racing, uh, nothing to do with actually having any skill on a motorcycle at all. You just have to be willing to go fast enough to make the jump and I guess be good enough to get the bike to land how you want it to. This is kind of like this little podunk little area, but he has, you know, a $30,000 roll-in ramp, which, <laughs> you know, his motorcycle's a piece of junk. Usually, if you're doing a fair event or something, you wouldn't take the time to build that roll-in as big or as theatrical, but that's kind of what Evil Knievel did, and Evil made a living on his showmanship. Hot Rod is kind of like the, the underdog Evil Knievel story of a stuntman trying to make it, thinking he's a lot better than he is, and failing at every step. Eagle, Fox. Bottlenose Dolphin, Octopus, Housecat. He's kind of, you know, summoning everything that he can and he's naming Octopus, Housecat. Like, this is kind of like a showmanship that you would see any stunt rider do beforehand, but they're not gonna do it to the, with themselves. If he's thinking about what he's doing, you know, Rod is going to be more in that moment and all of this stuff would already have been done before this point. <laughs> The sound wasn't correct with his throttle, but Hollywood always gets that wrong. They're really bad about that. You can see his wrist is making like the throttle. The sound of the motorcycle isn't going up and down with the throttle. The editor just pulls out like motorcycle sounds and puts it <laughs> straight over top of the, the feed. You'll have four strokes over two stroke engines and two strokes over four strokes. And well, as a motocross racer, we speak brap. Like brap, 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 brap. Or so you can actually talk to anyone that rides a dirt bike, whatever language you speak and you can talk them around the track, what gear you're in, uh, what the motorcycle sounds like, and you can actually take that and learn distances and, and everything off of just literally the sound that you make. Every Hollywood film starts out vroom, 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 like you kickstart the bike, you rev the throttle. You never really do that, but you should probably have someone that edits these films that knows a little bit about how to speak rap. Here we go, dropping in. A wheelie down's pretty good. Oh, feet come off. His distance was perfect. He just let go of the motorcycle and flew away from it without realizing, which would really never happen. I mean, you have to actually let go of a motorcycle. And usually when you're scared, you're holding on super tight. Um, but you can see he's super confident. Rod, he's got all the confidence in the world. He's got his friends backing him up. He's made it, he's in the big time. And then he just forgets what he's doing and just flies away. So, realistic, no, funny, yes. See, this is over dramatic where it goes super slow motion. Now generally, as a rider, when you're doing something, everything feels in slow motion. Uh, kind of like anyone that's been in a crash or a life-threatening situation, like time kind of stands still. In motocross and stunts, you have to see kind of what's going on at, a, at that quicker rate, or at least your brain's processing it faster than it normally does. When you're thumbs upping someone, it's more of a mental thing, like, all right, this is going good. Not like, hi, I'm taking my thumb off or my hand off the bars uh, in the middle of the, the middle of the jump that might go possibly wrong and making eye contact, you just way over the top. Everyone that's jumped motorcycles uh, from that height, has fallen from that height and tumbled. And sometimes you break bones and sometimes you get up and you just bruised up. So somehow the motorcycle took a hard deviation off of the, the flight path on the landing and uh, took out the stage and everything else. That would probably not happen. I would hope in this day and age that people would have a little more common sense of what possible direction the motorcycle would go and how it would bounce and not put the stages there. But you know, even in motocross races in recent years, um, Guys have flown off the track and, and hit tractors on the side. So Hot Rod, call classic. Um, definitely one of my favorite movies, uh, for sure, sadly. But uh, definitely a lot of fun. And anyone that's done stunts in their backyard, it, it kind of, it makes you feel back in those kind of early days of just building your own ramps, nothing working, crashing all the time. But having fun. All right, guys, next up, Vice Principles. If you want to go 12 o'clock, Neil, you got to believe. Okay, I believe. So one of the funny things is you don't really ride two up on, on a dirt bike. I mean, you, you could, I guess, uh, physically. It's really hard to do a wheelie with someone hanging off the back, especially someone that, uh, that heavy. Go 12 o'clock, Neil. You gotta believe. Okay, 
Okay, I believe. And she's trying to teach him how to do a wheelie, to make, go 12 o'clock, which means straight up and down, pointing towards 12. Not something that's necessarily uh, like a, a racing term, but she never did a wheelie, um, which was interesting. I think he's trying to do some wheelies and he gets it a little bit. I mean, that's how you start doing a wheelie. But everyone's kind of laughing at him, giving him a hard time, and he's really upset. Man, something's wrong with this stupid bike. Hit the gas harder, Neil. You got this. You know, complains about the bike, which is what every rider does if they can't do it. Oh, this bike won't do a wheelie. So she's just saying hit the gas harder, which is pretty good uh, advice. <laughs> now, at this point, you need to have your right foot on the rear brake or the bike will just loop out on you. And then he does a nose wheelie, which means you grab the front brake and you go up on the front end, which is very difficult. Uh, so the chances are someone that's first time on a motorcycle doing a wheelie from a little pop-up wheelie to something that long is very unrealistic. But impossible? Nah. As a rider, uh, you can learn how to ride a wheelie in an afternoon, but not as an inexperienced rider on a bike uh, that's that powerful. Yeah, that would have just put him straight on his butt. If he grabbed a handful of throttle, he would have looped straight out, uh, not knowing she never said, hey, keep your foot on the back brake in case you just start to loop out. You can just push that and it'll lower it back down. Uh, there's motorcycles that you wouldn't want to learn on. I'd say if that's your first time, I don't know if that's a 250 or 450, but either way, it's a, it's a race bike. I would say that's not your ideal bike. Uh, you might want to try like a 110, um, a pit bike, like a KLX or something like that. He was on maybe a, a race 450, so slightly different. Definitely don't want to try on a Harley for your first time, or any full dresser or super heavy bike. When I started riding, first thing you kind of start to do is just, you know, see if you can lift the front end up. And, and by the time I was probably six, I could wheelie down pretty far. It's in the second grade uh, for show and tell, I was able to bring the bring my dirt bike to school, and I did a wheelie around the parking lot. So that was pretty cool. Good cool factor for school. Without a doubt, dirt bike helmet or a car helmet, everything would have been a lot better than a football helmet, but it's better that he wore a helmet than no helmet, and at the end of the day, this seems pretty realistic because uh, so many times when you don't have the proper equipment, you use the best that you have. That's the perfect scenario to uh, learn how to do a wheelie. Trying to A, impress a girl, and B, not looking like a dork in front of all the kids. 99 out of 100 times, you're gonna grab too much as opposed to too little and go straight on your butt. Next up, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. They built this track where there, there's no flaggers, there's no starting gate. It's kind of a freestyle park, so it's kind of like this unrealistic, just out of this world kind of place where you have all the top riders that are going around doing kind of a, a speeding style, if you will, like X Games had where you get points for doing tricks and for going fast. So there's no real barriers or boundaries. <laughs> They used some of the best riders out there, but they also use a lot of kind of CGI. You see, like motorcycles don't explode on impact. You know, it's kind of odd. A couple spots you have, um, you have places where there's actually mechanics and stuff where you don't really get that feel from the, the overall perspective of this. I, it looks like more of like a practice facility where you just have kind of the best in the world gathering around to be awesome. A stuntman had to take that crash. So there are some legit crashes. There's some great riding. This track looks like one of the best freestyle, kind of speed and style tracks I've ever seen. Why they're doing tricks over every jump in the middle of a race, I have no idea. During the motocross race, you, you don't get any points for doing tricks. Matter of fact, you might get a trick talking to you when you come off the tracks. But this isn't like a race. They did enough to kind of downplay what it was in this kind of uh, out of this world freestyle park that really, I guess, whatever rules they have feel reasonable. This was right when backflips were just coming out. Pretty cool to do a backflip and land right in between two other people. 
it's wild that every bike is just blowing up on, on impact and that no one really seems to care. All the riders just keep going. That's about the time the rest of the riders would go, you know what, we're gonna stop and see if they're okay. I mean, like I might knock my friend down and laugh, but if they're on fire, like that's kind of my cue to say, yeah, we've gone a little too far here. could technically do a trick and do a no foot a can can where you take your feet off and kick someone in the chest. I've accidentally knocked my friend off the bike where he landed and actually fell on, on impact after kicking him in the chest. Now this turnaround uh, firing back, you wouldn't be able to get back on unless you had a tow hook there. This uh, kiss of death uh, while shooting, while taking both hands off, uh, completely impossible. Now to have two guns, loaded in your hands somehow after you take off and to be able to let go while doing a handstand, there'd be no way that you could stay with the motorcycle and you're weightless. So once you turn one way, if you don't have anything hooked, you just keep spinning. And when you fire the guns, so any kind of impact is gonna significantly change your direction. And then putting them back in the holsters, grabbing back on the motorcycle, that's still magically right there even though you've had repulsion in a different direction. Jumping off and landing on someone else's motorcycle, has it happened? Yes. Front flipping off the back of a bike onto a bike that it just happens to be there, not gonna happen. The crashes uh, were quite amazing and there was a lot of big crashes. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's done fake, but there's a lot of stuff that's done real. And enough was real to make you kind of overlook the fake stuff and say, wow, this was very difficult. This whole stunt segment took a lot of very talented riders. Next up, the place beyond the pines. Battery's dead. That's disappointing. Actually, the sound kind of matches the motorcycle. I like that. I don't understand how bad guys always ride motorcycles. They're a good getaway vehicle, but they're, they're not the best, like, uh, not getting killed vehicle. So right now, the motorcycle could just kind of go straight, but he's somehow being caught by the cop cars, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. And then all of a sudden he's, the sounds are like a, a CR85 or something. Not quite the same bike that he started on, although he's still riding it visually. It, it doesn't really make any sense in, in my head to how they come up with these sounds. Like just, oh, Google search. Yeah, motorcycle sounds. I, I feel like they, they have to at least have a little more understanding of that or that the motorcycle can't change sounds so many times during one scene. Or that like Tokyo Drift or anything, you can't shift 15 times. You're like, okay, motorcycle has six gears. That bike might only have five, but this guy just shifted 15 times going down the straightaway. Eh. Motorcycles are, are pretty broad across the range. I mean, you have street bikes that are made for uh, riding on the road. You have dirt bikes made for riding on dirt, obviously. You have different engines, two strokes and four strokes. You've got kick, kick start and electric start. You know, in this particular movie, uh, this guy starts up on a um, on a four-stroke electric start, more of a dirt bike, but also uh, made for going on the road and street legal. So that means it's a lot less powerful. Yeah, everything kind of adds up at the beginning, and then all of a sudden the engine noise changes, and he's riding something completely different, or sounding completely different from what he's riding. He shifts a lot, and yeah, I mean this is that's kind of a bike that you would expect more an off-road motorcycle that's legal for the street. So, all right, he's got a flat on his rear tire, but for some reason he's not going away from the road. He actually jumps back on the pavement road instead of just getting away from the cops. Flat rear tire on a dirt bike doesn't really slow you down much. You know, on pavement, it's harder. Like, if he really did have a flat tire, he'd probably stick more to the dirt, uh, which he does get off onto the kind of cemetery. And if you're on dirt, you can, you can definitely run away from cops uh, or vehicles riding down the road for sure. But for some reason he has the bad idea to jump back onto the road 
but he does find a little escape path. Uh, again, we've gone to a completely different motorcycle sound. Shifted to 15th gear. Oh, it lays it down for no apparent reason. So the motorcycle rider in this film showed enough skill to, as a car's backing up, he could have easily gone around, even with the flat tire. But you can see as the car came up, he turned actually into the car, um, intentionally doing you know, a stunt move of sliding out. Now this is a lot easier with a flat tire because the back tire doesn't actually catch traction in what they call high side when you catch traction in and basically fling you up over top of the car. It was a well executed stunt, definitely wasn't realistic. The rider probably wouldn't have just laid it down. He probably would have turned the other direction towards the right and maybe bumped off the car if he couldn't have got it around, but more than likely would have made it through that scenario uh, unscathed. Next up, Bennett's War. These guys are actually riding at a place called Glen Helen, very popular motocross track. Got some big hills out there. And these two were just so far ahead of everyone else that nobody else was looked like they were on the track. Makes it easier, A, for filming, and B, it's it's very realistic to what could actually happen. Gotcha. Not, you're not gonna be saying gotcha or talking really through it. Oh, there we go. Grabs a handful of throttle, like every other movie does, and passes the main character. Number one. Very rare this day and age, but maybe a couple years ago could have been a little more possible. I think it was a military guy, if I'm not mistaken. So there's a lot of top military that you wouldn't have heard of that have a skill set that are really amazing. There's a lot of guys that wanted to get into base jumping or wanted to get into motocross or uh, driving cars, but they didn't have the, the funds to do it. And they figured, man, I'll go join special forces and I'll learn that way. There, there's a chance that you have someone that's a little more unnoticed that does come from, from the military ranks. But this day and age, the chance of that, um, no one seeing that or knowing about that, it is very slim. <laughs> to see someone come back from an injury, you're always expecting them to take a little bit of time to get up to speed mentally. So it's always cool when you have this kind of underdog story, someone that got hurt, someone that's beat up. And when they do get back out there, uh, they are as fast or faster than they were before. Every injury is different and every injury has a little bit of a, a psychological factor as well. Um, so there's a lot of guys that they get hurt and all they think about is getting back out there. And they'll actually mentally train and think about what they're gonna do different, how they're gonna do it better. They're watching videos, they're watching tape, they're understanding the sport a little bit better. They get a different perspective on how much it means to them and they come back and their first day back on the motorcycle, they'll be as good as their last day off. And you have other guys that they get back and they're really hesitant and they lose fearlessness that, that made them good. So it really depends on the personality. These riders are good. Big whips, they use really good motocrossers. So the riding from that perspective is awesome. Uh, the motorcycle sounds were right on. So watching this section in Bennett's Ford, the only thing that's really off is he goes in the corner and says, I got this, and then grabs a handful of throttle. Like, no, I mean, you're going as fast as you can. You're not just suddenly going to twist the throttle harder. And it's like uh, you know, watching Fast and the Furious and they're like half throttle. They're racing down a straightaway with nothing they can possibly hit. And all of a sudden they decide to shift up to 15th gear and push the pedal to the ground. Like you're probably already doing that. And there's no 15th gear. Next clip, Mad Max. Obviously uh, one of the all time greatest stuntman movies. Now, for motorcycles to try to take down this big truck is crazy, but they do have some firepower. They're dropping some, uh, some bombs, if you will, onto it. And yeah, he shoots down some motorcycles. So that was a big jump that the guy just jumped off the motorcycle on. That, this is one of the things they did a really great job to make the stunts the primary factor. And the sound was right, the bikes were right, you know, that's a, that's a huge thing when you're working kind of in the stunt world. So yeah, I thought that was, um, that was all done really well. You could definitely get that kind of height off of that terrain. There was one where the guy was jumping, I don't know, it, was, it looked like probably 150 foot, uh, maybe 40, 50 feet off the ground. You're not going to jump that far unless you know what's on the backside. So unless they were extremely familiar with that area and had already done that jump before, uh, that's not just something you just launch in the air and hope there's a landing on the other side because, well, uh, unless you're suicidal. 
Gun! Like the chances of there being a lip or a ramp, if you will, um, in the desert, like jumps, yeah, they're all over. You're gonna be in the air, but for the timing to just happen to be perfect where you could jump onto a moving vehicle would be next to impossible, but not impossible, just extremely improbable. I like the stunt work in there. It's a little unrealistic that it could have all happened, but could all of it happen individually? Of course. Mad Max, it's a stuntman's dream. It was done by stuntmen for stuntmen. Thought it was awesome. Most of my friends were, were in that movie for the actual actors in the movie, but definitely cool.